I'm Amir Kiai, and I'm representing Democracy in Europe Movement 25, the M25, on this mission uh, to Al-Sert and the rest of the refugee camps in Tindouf, Algeria. We have seen the incredible solidarity and spirit that the Sahrawi people have shown as they're approaching five decades of struggle. And it's a struggle that as Europe is especially complicit in, whether that's through expanding trade with the main colonizer, in this case, Morocco, and not taking up its responsibility of decolonization, which would fall on Spain, as well as providing arms and weaponry and so on for the conflict to continue. Throughout the European Union, no country has recognized the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, which is yet another indication of the defeat of the sovereignty of the people in Europe and the importance of the M25's mission of democratizing Europe. There's been so much impact um, on us here, uh, whether it was the amazing welcome and the generosity displayed by the Sahrawi people and their steadfastness and the struggle that, that's on display after 47 years of being in these extremely harsh conditions. We also visited um, an indigenous innovation around farming, for example, which so process everything that is it's possible in the worst conditions possible. There's, there's an aquaponic farm with a complete uh, a water cycle, for example, that's being developed here. Climate change has been intensifying, um, of course, greatly globally, but the effects are really seen here in, uh, in the refugee camps. The very little agriculture that is possible here that's been done experimentally hasn't really worked as well as it could have. They've had more challenges with um, extreme weather events which happened a few years ago um, and destroyed um, quite a lot of the refugee housing and as you can see around you here that there's not much housing to begin with in the first place. The very little resources that they have has had to actually go into coping with the climate change uh, situation on top of dealing with about a high rates of inflation as well as reduced humanitarian aid due to the Ukrainian crisis. The European response has been really shameful um, in this context of Western Sahara. The um, Spanish government's reaction and tacit implicit support from the government for the Moroccan autonomy plan, the moving of um, France closer to the position of Morocco on this issue, and of course the expansion of trade between the EU um, and Morocco, despite numerous UN General Assembly Security Council resolutions that very clearly highlight the right of the Sahrawi people to a referendum, which was promised to them in around 1975, 1976, and that still hasn't taken place. And the geopolitical situation, of course, is changing, and the, um, the interplay between the energy crisis as well as the refugee crisis is being used as a catalyst towards further um, entrenching colonization in the occupied parts of Western Sahara. One of the major effects, of course, of the war in Ukraine and the sudden availability of funds to further fuel the conflict there through weapons and so on. And we know about the 100 billion euros that suddenly Germany had to expand on its military and immediate increase to 2% or more of uh, national spending to meet NATO standards is also causing an internal escalation on arms spending throughout Europe. This obviously has an effect of reducing uh, the little humanitarian aid funding that was available. So the Sahrawi people at the moment are, apart from um, the UNHCR, uh, WFP and so on funding, rely heavily on people-to-people uh, -people, uh, organizations primarily based in Spain but in, of course throughout uh, the world and Latin America, Cuba, Venezuela, etc. Uh, that are s uh, sustaining the population here. Uh, in terms of forecasting this into the future, we know that with the conflict continuing as the, at the same pace that it is, and of course, as I mentioned earlier on, creating that inflationary pressure, uh, the situation here could get worse. However, we've also witnessed the agility and the uh, response of the Sahrawi uh, government here in anticipating that um, uh, future and dealing with that and responding to it. In our meetings with the officials, with the people, with the um, um, civil society members and so on, that every meeting we've had, even with our host family, the core message has been that um, this uh, forgotten conflict, and it is a conflict um, situation, it's important that the world remembers and uh, does not forget about the continued colonization um, of the Sahrawi people's land. 
taking that message back to our homes and to our uh, people, to our organizations and to the wider public um, has been the core uh, that has been asked of us.